Well, thanks again for call, asking me to come back. I, uh, when we first talked about this, I just did kind of a brief uh, intro on the 462 because uh, I thought Chris would take right over. But if we've got a little bit of time, I, I can show you, um, uh, for those who didn't see the last uh, presentation, uh, I can describe the 462 in kind of quicker detail and uh, explain uh, how it comes configured in a standard kit. And now we've got a new expanded kit that we're gonna start offering on Monday and I can explain what's in it as, as well uh, before Chris comes on. All right, go for it. So let me make sure I've got the right presentation here. Is that showing up properly? Oh yeah. Okay, good. Um, the uh, 462 is, uh, for those who didn't see the last presentation and don't know the camera, it's a, it, it is uh, another in the line of the QHY 53 series cameras, which are high-speed USB 3 cameras. Uh, and they are uh, small. This is an inch and a quarter diameter barrel. So it, it's like eyepiece size. It fits in an eyepiece. Um, and it's got on the back, it's got a USB port and a port for uh, guiding. It's got a, it's also a guider. <clears throat> um, this camera, the 462 is new. It's, it's, it's the latest version. It's kind of the latest version of what was the 290C. And by latest, I mean, it's got a sensor in it that has the same architecture uh, pixel wise, same number of pixels, same pixel size, same size chip as the 290, but this one's back illuminated and it's got enhanced uh, infrared capability. So it makes it uh, quite a bit more sensitive than the 290. Um, it's a Sony Exmor R Starvis CMOS sensor. And what that means is that um, Exmor means that it's got the, the Sony's uh, technique for noise reduction and parallel A to Ds that speed up the download rate. Um, it, R means it's back illuminated. Starvis is Sony's uh, trade name for starlight visibility, which means if you use it as a, like a security camera, it can see by starlight. It's very, very sensitive. And that also means naturally that you can see stars with it. Um, so it works actually as a very nice uh, nighttime camera to look at the sky in addition to doing uh, high resolution planetary imaging. This is a sixth generation chip. It's the latest, very latest chip, a uh, brand new chip, has all the improvements of generations one through five, plus this extra high uh, IR sensitivity. Um, and what that means in terms of the way the camera performs, if we think of the quantum efficiency curves we usually see for cameras and color cameras, they typically look like this. There's a, uh, in the visual range, um, you know, the red, green, and blue. And then in the near IR, they tend to, uh, let me get a pointer up here. Um, they, they, they normally, uh, color cameras and monochrome cameras for that matter, tend to have a curve that up, up after it gets passed around 700 nanometers goes pretty much pretty much straight down to a thousand. I mean, they bend a little bit, but it kind of goes in this direction till they get down to, uh, uh, you know, a thousand nanometers and then it's uh, pretty close to zero or a few uh, percent QE, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, but with this 462C uh, in the near IR, the curves look like this, which, which give it a peak up around 850 nanometers that is equal to or higher than the quantum efficiency that it has in the visual range. So it's really kind of two cameras. It's a, it's a visual camera down here. And up here, it's a monochrome uh, infrared camera. And the reason it's monochrome is because the filters that are used on it uh, have an, uh, use an organic dye that become transparent in the uh, infrared. And so you can see all these the red, green, and blue kind of merge together here about 875 nanometers and uh, become, uh, it becomes a monochrome sensor at that point. And 
So what that means is you can slap a UV IR filter on it, which blocks light above around 700 nanometers above the visual. And it operates like a normal color camera, a very high sensitive color camera. Or you can put uh, this IR blocker on it and, and it comes with an IR850 filter which blocks everything below 850, but passes all this monochrome near infrared light and operates like a monochrome infrared camera up here. <coughs> Excuse me. If you're a planetary imager, um, you might be interested, especially for Jupiter and Saturn, in uh, the methane band. Uh, and methane filters are often used to capture a certain kind of detail on, on these gas giant planets. And the methane filter tends to sit right here, right where it's got very high QE in the near IR. So it operates as a highly sensitive methane camera in that case. Um, the other thing this camera has that's new, that's new on the sixth generation ship is what Sony calls super high conversion gain. Now they've had high conversion gain um, on their sensors for a little while, but the super high conversion creates a, a high gain that has extraordinarily low read noise. Um, when, when the camera switches from low gain to high gain, which it does, you can see right here very clearly, it drops down from a read noise of, you know, in the twos to, to a one electron of read noise. And as you increase the gain, it gets much lower until it's maybe half an electron. <coughs> Find time to get a, a frog in my throat. Yeah, I've got the same thing right now because I just <laughs> finished eating. Um, since I've interrupted you, quick question. Are the QE curves with or without the protective window? <clears throat> uh, they, the protective window is transparent. Um, and so I don't think it will affect these curves much, maybe you know a few percent. Yeah, so just in general, um, cameras that have these protective windows, um, depending on on which camera it is, generally have no coatings. So it's just 100%, well, 99.9% .9 light transmission, we'll call it. <clears throat> so now you passed a frog onto my throat. <laughs> well, you're welcome to it. Uh, some color cameras um, put a, a, a window that blocks the near IR. Because uh, you don't in a in a just in a plain vanilla <laughs> so to speak color camera you don't want the IR light because it'll it will um, screw up the color balance and yep. so typically you put a, a blocking filter on it in order to get rid of this IR because then you have good RGB color balance and some col color cameras will use a window that has IR blocking uh, on the window as well as anti-reflection coating. So it'll have an IR blocking coating. This one has does not have the IR blocking. It's got a window that has anti-reflection only, but no IR blocking. Right, so yeah, every camera is going to differ. You just have to look up from the specification side of things. Um, I see Adam still watching our stream, even though he was just on it. Uh, planets would be fine, but for deep sky, would air glow, wouldn't air glow dominate? By using one of these cameras, no, I think air glow is not uh, it is not up so high in the infrared. In fact, in the infrared, um, you kind of you kind of see through a lot of uh, scattered uh, light that is, you know, dust in the in the air. So I don't I don't think air, I believe air glow is is kind of down in this range, um, not up here in the infrared. I could be wrong, but. I don't believe that's going to be an issue at all. Uh, the QE specs being shown are just the sensor, just so you understand that. It is the sensor only, just to get to make this clear. Yeah. Okay. All right, carry on. Sorry. I should also say it's an estimate. I mean, I mean we, we say estimate up here to be clear. Sony doesn't give absolute numbers for their specifications. We, oh, they never they, do. Yeah. We base this estimate on uh, what we expect it, it is going to be. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, so high gain, you get so so the benefit of this, it, it, you switch this camera to high gain if you're doing planetary imaging, 
because you don't need um, a, a, a deep well for like you would if you're doing um, long exposures, uh, you know, of something. And you you want the lowest possible read noise if you're stacking, you know, hundreds or thousands of frames to do planetary imaging, which some of the best planetary planetary imagers do. And in this case, uh, you can do it with very low uh, noise contribution because of the low read noise of the sensor. <clears throat> this is a, an example uh, comparing the 462 uh, with the 290C. Same, same camera, same, everything's identical. Same light source, same light intensity, same exposure time, same pixel size. Same, uh, everything's the same. Only difference is the chip. And uh, you can see that the 462 really does outperform the 290. And this, by the way, this test image is only in the visual. There's no IR in here. If they, if they had taken the uh, UV IR filter off, this would be even more uh, pronounced, I think. I'm not going to do the joke again about your cat. Uh, yeah, that's it. I, I know. I, I already done that joke last time around. <laughs> I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> They, they had they had to use whatever they could get you know so uh, some key specs uh, it's uh, 2.9 micron pixels uh, it's a uh, 1920 by 1080 resolution uh, read noise we've already talked about from 2.6 at low gain which is the worst case uh, to half an electron at high gain that's just incredible QE is probably in the 80 to 90 percent range uh, we don't know exactly where until we actually measure it, uh, but also uh, not just in the visual, but in the near IR. And it does 135 frames uh, per second, full frame, full resolution, and higher rates if you do a selected region of interest, a smaller portion of the frame. Fits in an inch and a quarter eyepiece holder and only weighs three ounces. So the, the camera, the, the standard, uh, QHY 53462 uh, comes with a, a few extra accessories that the other 53 series cameras don't include. It, it comes with a USB cable, which is uh, typical for all of them. This is a type B USB 3 cable, which means that this connector is a, uh, this style, and it's a very solid connection. I'm very impressed with the type B connectors because they, they're very difficult to pull out accidentally. So it's almost like a locking connector. It's, it, it goes in quite a ways and it's a very solid uh, connection. So it's, it's a really good choice, I think. Uh, it comes with a guiding cable. So it can be used as a guider. The, uh, it comes with a C-mount adapter that screws onto the front of the inch and quarter. Uh, and it comes with, the, that you learned in our last uh, video, the, the focus lock ring. You can slide this over the barrel of the camera and um, when you find a good focal point, if you're using it in an off-axis guider or something where you don't want to change the focus of the telescope when you take the camera in and out, you can put this ring on. And uh, if you have to slide the camera in and out of the draw tube a little bit to get it to focus perfectly, then you just lock this focus ring down. And that's, that's focus for this camera on that device. Now you can take it out, put it in, and it'll just drop right in and be in focus the next time you put it back in, which is uh, very handy. Uh, the 462 comes with the standard accessories, uh, comes with a UV IR filter for taking RGB images in uh, visible light. Also comes with a IR850, which passes the infrared light above 850 nanometers, so you can use it as an IR camera. And this is the standard uh, setup that comes with every camera. And the price for this system, as you see it, is $299. Um, we just are going to announce, in fact, uh, this weekend finalized it. And on Monday, <laughs> we will make it uh, official. But on uh, we're going to add uh, what's called an expansion pack to this camera for anybody that wants it. And that expansion pack will include a methane filter for planetary images and an all sky 
uh, camera lens, uh, C mount lens, and a CS, it's a CS mount lens, and a CS adapter. So you can put this, uh, this wide angle uh, all sky lens on it with the CS adapter pointed up, and it's an all sky camera. Or you can use the methane filter to do planetary imaging. You can use the IR filter for IR imaging or use the uh, UV IR filter for regular color imaging. And with the expanded kit, the price is $349, which is phenomenal. I mean, you can't buy, I don't know, you can, you can buy, I, I don't know what uh, 890 nanometer methane filters go for, but um, typically I would think they're at, uh, more than 50 bucks. So to get a, an all sky lens, a, mount, a CS mount, and a methane filter for an extra $50 is a really sweet deal. So that's the expanded kit. If somebody already has bought the 462 with the standard accessories and they want to add this kit, they can add it for $50.